Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here at the Hurricane Auckland session for July 14th, 2020, occurred on 208 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, a real quick look here at the sea surface temperature anomalies that's updated as of yesterday, July the 13th. Not much has overly changed. Out here in the equatorial Pacific, we continue to notice this cooler than normal area in anomalies here. Uh, more particular in the Nino 3.4 region, which is our area of interest out here for the ENSO conditions in the base state. We are in a cool neutral look right now. Again, this is not a La Nina as of right now, but we are in a cool neutral. These water temperatures, especially in the Nino 3.4 region, are continuing to cool after some slight warming over the past few days or so. But this has now led towards some cooling as another easterly wind event has occurred here off the coast of South America. This leads to an upwelling effect causing all of this water right here to be upwelled, causing cooler than normal waters. Basically, in some cases out here, a whole 2 degrees Celsius below the long-term average. That ends up getting transported uh, by the currents all across this area and leads towards the formation of a cool neutral and or what we'll, we'll probably be heading towards is a La Nina by uh, fall and winter of this year. And out here in the deep tropics of the main development region of the Atlantic Basin continuously warming up here. We talked about this over the last several days. Any of the cooler anomalies that you saw right in through here caused by the Saharan air event and uh, screaming trade winds. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. We basically have non-existent trade winds across this area. I mean, we still have some, especially, you know, the further north you go, we still have the higher trade winds. Uh, but for the most part down here in the deep tropics in the main development region, the atmosphere is now starting to finally get primed up. And again, you know, for, for reference, some of these numbers are now approaching, you know, about one half degree Celsius above the long-term average in the southern main development region. This continues all the way into the Atlant the southwestern Atlantic, the Bahamas, off the coast of Florida and the Carolinas, the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, Lesser Antilles. This area is just lit up with positive anomalies. And that is one thing for sure that we'll be watching closely as we progress towards the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Speaking of warmth, this is taking a look here at the upper ocean heat content values as of this morning. Once again, for reference, once you start getting up into the reds and, you know, greens and oranges and yellows, that's basically the upper third of the scale. Basically, this is your more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere. And how deep down does that 80 degree isotherm go? You need about 80 degrees Fahrenheit for these tropical cyclones to really thrive and take advantage of. And again, this is kind of concerning out here in the Caribbean and the Bahamas with these water, you know, with the upper ocean heat content values, especially off near the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, um, you know, in Belize, and basically in the upper part of the scale, basically the upper fourth really of the scale almost maxed out here. So even notice down here in the Gulf of Mexico, as we talked about yesterday, where water temperatures are running 29 to 30 Celsius. These upper ocean heat content numbers in the Gulf of Mexico are really ramping up as well. So you can imagine, you know, if you had something traveling, you know, somewhere like that, you know, this area is primed per se now for tropical cyclones to really thrive in uh, as compared to earlier. And even out here south of the Cabo Verde Islands, there's now a pocket of where we're starting to see that. And again, we, we talked about how this is going to be advancing northward and, you know, this is advancing northward. We've been talking about how... This is going to start pulling, you know, north, and we're already seeing that, that this is basically running at about close now. It's about 15 north, in some cases now getting closer to about 18 north or so. So these, you know, water, uh, these water content, uh, you know, depth here is pretty favorable in terms of, you know, taking advantage basically everywhere I'm highlighting has a fairly significant upper ocean heat content value. And again, you notice this area that has been cut out. We'll talk about why that is here in a minute. But again, this area, bottom line, more than favorable in the throughout dynamic sense for tropical cyclones to take advantage of. Now, if we take a look here at the up or the, the actual skin temperatures, the water temperatures at the very top of the surface of the water, this is coming off from the CDAS methodology, just a different way of measuring these water temperatures. This comes from tropicaltibbets.com. And again, we've been talking about this. You know, the westerly wind event has now kind of started. It's going to continue. These water temperatures are now more than favorable in the grand majority, really, of the main development region of the Atlantic Basin. I mean, basically everywhere I'm highlighting has that favorability. So 
you know, we talked about, you know, this 50 West line, uh, you know, the 50 latitude line, uh, you know, way early in the beginning of the season. You notice how that's now sort of advanced basically over towards, you know, 40 West and beyond. That's now getting probably about 35 West uh, latitude or so. And even now up here in the subtropical Atlantic, uh, you know, about 30 North uh, longitude, this area is f more than favorable uh, for these tropical cyclones to now take advantage. Now, there's still a lot of dry air in this part of the world right now, but again, it is only really a matter of time before things really get kind of kick-starting out here. And this is going to be the most important thing. We will carefully monitor these sea surface temperatures and how they fluctuate or the, how they fluctuate over the next several weeks to months. This is going to become crucial for these tropical cyclones, really, if they want to go ahead and develop. Now, taking a look here at what's going on out here currently in the visible satellite coming from the College to Page goes 17, uh, yeah, actually goes 16 satellite viewer. Uh, basically, right now, this is the little tropical depression, the tropical depression 6E that did form yesterday and is no longer expected to become a tropical storm. This is moving into cooler waters. Again, basically, this is actually some of your rem remnant circulation associated with Christina. That is pulling out dry air, stable, you know, air out here. Uh, very limited uprush and heat content and cooler waters will prevent this from going ahead and developing further. So this, again, no swell c concern even. And nothing really trying to bundle out here, you know, you know, you could kind of argue maybe this little wave action right there, but I'm not really seeing anything that's trying to bundle in the eastern Pacific. Again, we could still see a couple systems try to form here and there, but the eastern Pacific just is not favorable right now. And, you know, we haven't even had any hurricanes in the eastern Pacific basin, which by now, you know, the eastern Pacific, even in 2017, had, you know, a couple hurricanes already. And we're not seeing anything right now. We're, we're seeing zero hurricane activity in the eastern Pacific Basin. And, you know, the western Pacific de is dead. The Indian Ocean is dead. Um, the global tropics are basically dead, but not really. And if we take a look at that here, this is uh, the same satellite viewer here from the same page, but on the Atlantic side, a couple things to note first. We'll start from left to right. Again, this is our old kind of trough axis. This was really entangled up uh, beginning with, uh, you know, Tropical Storm Fay that, of course, you know, formed out here off the coast to the Outer Banks, moved up and, and moved up in New Jersey, north of uh, Ocean City, Maryland. Again, this is our little front axis trough wave, whatever, uh, basically like a little uh, trough that's kind of been situated out here over the past few days or so. And if we jump back to the upper ocean heat content, you notice how that is We'll highlight this in red here. Now, uh, this whole area is kind of a donut hole in through there, and that's primarily because this area has produced widespread showers and thunderstorms. It's cooled off the skin temperatures a little bit, and we haven't we've seen a reduction in the skin temperatures and the upper ocean heat content out here. But again, that that's going to rebound for sure. Um, but again, we're not really seeing much elsewhere other than in he here the deep tropics. You notice a very vigorous tropical wave. I mean, this is pretty vigorous. I mean, and it's only July the 14th, but very vigorous tropical wave. You can clearly see well-defined circulation here. We've got, you know, kind of that, that flow of a low pressure center. This is more than likely a mid-level low because um, I, I mean, would really highly doubt that we actually have a closed low-level center in there. So it's probably a mid-level low, and that's uh, very indicative by some of these uh, cloud features out here not streaming into it. They're streaming away from it. So this is not a low-level center. This is a mid-level center, though. But rather interesting here, very strong tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa that ejected from a mesoscale convective system from the Sahel region. Again, this is the intertropical convergence zone right through here. This is going to roll off over the next several days and kind of move across, you know, wondrously over the Atlantic Basin. Not really a threat to develop. You notice a lot of this, you know, cumulus uh, field over here and just your kind of milky white cirrus. This is basically very indicative of that very dry, stable air, all this Saharan air that is still kind of prevalent through here. This is very typical for this time of the year. It's only July 14th. But this tropical wave coming off is a sign. My goodness, is that thing looking healthy today.
Again, you know, if this was, you know, late August into September, this would be a very big problem. And I do suspect that sooner rather than later, these tropical waves are going to overcome climatology. And it, things are starting to get to that point now where things are starting to get past the climatology. You know, just because something doesn't develop out here, this very strong wave with our nice mid-level center located in through there kind of looks like that little, um, can kind of see a little bit of an S shape almost in there. You know, it's looking pretty good and it's looking healthy today. We'll see what it looks like over the next few days or so. We'll definitely revisit this in tomorrow's uh, discussion. But very healthy tropical wave could bring some rain to the southern Cabo Verde Islands. Over the next few days, this is likely to move uh, westward generally. Could impact the Lesser Antilles, especially Barbados, and some of the Lesser Antilles there in the windwards. Nothing other than a rain producer more than likely as these tropical waves will kind of roll off through here. Not expecting any development uh, right now out there, but this will be very interesting as we progress throughout the rest of the season. Speaking of progressing through the rest of the season, this is the European uh, ECM WF Weekly Anomalies, or not, yeah, the QPF 46-day uh, anomalies, the quantitative precipitation forecast here from the European. Basically, these brown colors here are very indicative of your drier, uh, anomalously drier air. And uh, on the contrary, on the flip side here, these you know blues, greens, and you know kind of turquoise. Um, and very light blues, kind of the cyans, are, are very indicative of your higher than normal precipitation across the area. And you, you can just see, I mean, especially out here, you know, this out here, this anomaly right here, I'm kind of questioning because we're seeing very strong tropical waves come off of Africa now. The euro, the, the euro does have a dry bias, so we will kind of throw this little anomaly out here, not really expecting that to verify, and it hasn't verified. But given the dry bias, and this is really showing the very strong, very strong uh, anomalies here for above normal precipitation across the southern main development region, into the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Bahamas, I mean, what else can I say? And, and drier in the subtropics? Hmm. You know, it, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you're, you're playing detective and you're really trying to find kind of the, the, you know, who who committed that crime, right? Well, in this case, you're looking for the clues to the game. And one of your clues is this above normal precipitation all spread out here in the deep tropics. Nothing really that concentrated in the subtropical land. I mean, other than one little area out here. Where this area has seen formation, so this might have some uh, validity to it, but the, the area that we're really going to be watching now in terms of, you know, tropical potential is going to start shifting away from the deep tropics in the, sub or in the subtropical Atlantic, rather, and shifting into the deep tropics in the Cabo Verde Islands. This certainly has my attention, and combined with this, this is the European uh, ensembles of the uh, mean 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly, basically higher up in the atmosphere. And basically everywhere where you're seeing these kind of oranges and reds, that's your dryer or that's your sinking air in the atmosphere, your anomalous sinking air. And everywhere where you see these blues and greens is your anomalous rising air. And again, we are in a little bit of a slump right now. This is the 16th of July right here. This is the 26th of August. So this goes down throughout time. Again, this, you know, roughly correlates to the Atlantic Basin. And you notice where we are kind of standing out right now with this very anomalous pattern of suppression. But you notice what's going to be setting up. And, and this is what we've been talking about, this uh, standing wave basically over Africa in the Indian Ocean. What this tends to do is cause anomalous rising air over Africa, these stronger tropical waves. You know, and this kind of runs all the way out into Africa and portions of the main development region. This is something we look for, and this suggests that the pattern is going to start being more conducive for tropical cyclone formation as we head in through the beginning, really, of August. And again, you know, these tropical waves, if they don't get going now, they're going to develop out here in the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, those areas. It is only a matter of time before things really start ramping up out here in the deep tropical Atlantic. We have begun the ramp up. 
to the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. And when we see this, this very prevalent standing wave over Africa suggests these very robust tropical waves, more of them getting spit off the continent of, uh, the, the continent of Africa there. Uh, and that is just going to favor and spill these tropical waves into the Atlantic Basin. And it only takes one, really, to cause devastation and destruction, even if it's not a Category 5. So we want you guys to be very prepared and aware of what's going on. Speaking of awareness, this is the European, or not the European, the GFS 850 millibar zone of wind anomalies. Basically, these are your westerly winds down here in the reddish colors. These are your easterly winds out here in the subtropical Atlantic. This is really just crazy i mean we we've really just going to see over the next few days and weeks we're going to see persistent westerly winds not only at the 850 millibar uh, level but closer down to the surface where we actually might get a temporary stoppage basically of these easterly trades they go westernly for a little bit uh, this is going to help to warm significantly the main development region throughout really the next while. This runs all the way up through the next seven days. This is the next uh, basically four to eight days. And you see maybe a resurgence of these easterly trades out here. But if we take a look here at the the European, uh, we'll take a quick look here at the European uh, anomalies here for the 850 millibar zonal wind anomalies. And extend that all the way out. This is from the Zero Z run. Extend it all the way out. We notice these do increase out here, but in the northern portions of the main development region, really where it counts is right here. And this area is still warming all the way up until the next about 10 days or so. Very interesting to note. This has helped to warm the tropical Atlantic already, and this will continue to over the next several days or so. If we take a real quick look here at the European 850 millibar, um, the cyclonic, the 850 millibar vorticity, the spinning atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Real quickly, not really seeing anything, but a very robust tropical wave moving off of Africa here after the hour 192 time frame. We talked about this very briefly yesterday. And we're seeing signs of it, and even the GFS has it out here, hour 186, very sharp wave axis, kind of a, excuse me, a closed center of circulation, and that is going to favor these tropical waves to really get going out here. It's only a matter of time before something really gets going out here. So, want to bring that to your attention today, kind of a brief, shortened, uh, you know, video discussion today, of course. I will have more for you tomorrow. Real quickly, we did want to go ahead. I did kind of revamp the uh, website today. Uh, you can see right here. Instead of the individual little pictures for the um, for the tropical weather outlook here, uh, this is all combined into a one look uh, and a one drive. Um, PowerPoint presentation here, where you have uh, the formation chances in the the Atlantic and the. Uh, in the Eastern Pacific Basin. It's defaultly set for the Atlantic Basin. It's always going to be defaultly set for the Atlantic Basin uh, right now. And whenever we have anything going on in the Atlantic Basin, this map and graphic will change. Same thing with the Eastern Pacific right now with Tropical Depression 6E out here. You notice right here is 6E. Again, we will continue to monitor everything throughout the next few days. Again, all you need to do is if you want to go to the next slide, just click the right arrow and, and kind of vice versa for the back arrow. So again, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali, and I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everyone, and stay safe.